Uh, my name is Rob Williams, I'm an interventional radiologist and today we're going to discuss and show you how to treat a renal artery stenosis. This patient is a 63 year old man who's had episodes of flash pulmonary edema and has been shown to have a right renal artery stenosis on cross-sectional imaging. We're going to start off by doing a flush aortic angiogram to confirm the position of the renal artery and the presence of the lesion. So I'm going to insert a J-tipped guide wire via the right common femoral artery up into the aorta. I see the guide wire about to appear now. And we'll try and keep the tip of the guide wire in view. Over that guide wire, we're now going to place a diagnostic pigtail catheter. And we're going to take the pigtail portion of the catheter just above the anticipated level of the right renal artery. And to position the imaging a little further north and we can magnify the image. So we remove the guide wire and do a flush aortic angiogram. We use the injector and we'll inject a bolus of about 15 mils of contrast quite rapidly at about 15 mils a second. And it's a protracted angiogram. Okay, and this demonstrates the right renal artery stenosis. And we will try and find a reference image from that to act as a guide to the rest of the intervention. We'll now remove the pigtail caster, leaving the guide wire in the aorta. We've confirmed the presence of a lesion that we want to treat. And at this stage, we're going to insert a larger access guide caster into the groin to act as our gateway into the vessel and give us some support to treat the lesion. And this is a seven French guide catheter, so it's seven French external diameter. And it's a RDC or renal double curve shape. And this will help provide the support. And you can see it's an angled catheter, it has quite a significant angle. Um, and we'll allow us to cross this lesion more safely. Now going to insert a diagnostic caster. And this is just going to be a five French Cobra caster. This goes in over the J-tip guide wire, in through the guide caster. to support the back end of the wire. See it's off the top of the screen so you have to be a bit careful. In a second I'll withdraw it so I can see where the tip is. There we go. You'll see the catheter appear and come out the end of the guide sheath. At this point I'm going to bring the guide sheath back a little bit which will allow the cobra caster to take up its shape when the guide wire is removed. I'm going to start above the lesion. Again, remove the guide wire and you can see the cobra caster taking up its shape. 
and we'll just rotate the caster until it's pointing at the ostium of the vessel and just very slowly withdraw until we see it drop into the vessel. And rotation is incredibly sensitive at this point. You can see the catheter trying to jump out there. To confirm our position, we'll just do an angiogram. I tend to always put just a mil or so of contrast in very gently first just to confirm that we're not embedded in the wall of the vessel. The last thing you want to do at this stage is do a hard injection of 10 mils of contrast and cause a big dissection. So we've confirmed that, the catheter's bleeding back, so we'll do a subtracted run here. Okay, we've still got a bit of overlay on from the previous image. but And there's our lesion. It's just distal to the ostium. Typically these are osteal lesions, but it's, it's close. It's an atherosclerotic lesion and fits with the scenario. So at this stage we now need to think about crossing the lesion and to do this we're going to use a smaller kit, so 0 and 8 guide wire. Going to try and be as gentle as possible to avoid two things, dissection of the lesion, dissection of the vessel, which is disastrous because that will lead to occlusion. And also we're going to try and avoid embolization into the uh, distal renal artery. So this is an angled tip, 018 guide wire. So we've still got some overlay from the previous image, that's fine. That provides us, gives us a, a, a road map to work from. So this is the stage to be very, very careful. It's probably the most critical stage of the procedure. So guide wire gets to the end of the catheter. It's always worth just backing the catheter off for a fraction, and that gives the guide wire space to come out and form its shape. Very gently cross the lesion. If you need to at this stage, this is where you advance the catheter again to provide a bit more support. Rotate the wire. And we want to take this wire relatively distal into one of the renal artery branches, but again, just careful that we don't get a perforation. I'm now going to provide more support by using the guide catheter and advance that over our working catheter. And rotate, remember, you just see a rotation as you advance it. And take the guide catheter up into the ostium of the vessel. If you're using an access sheath at this stage, you might well replace your working cobra catheter with the introducer for the access sheath. We're now going to try and leave the guide caster in place and withdraw the working caster, the cobra caster. And we'll, in just a second, get rid of the overlay. And the aim is keep the guide catheter exactly in the same place. You don't want it walking forwards into the lesion. Again, that can cause dissection. And you don't want it falling back into the aorta. It pays to be careful at this stage. Okay, we remove that catheter. I'm just going to adjust the rotation of the guide catheter and make sure it's pointing directly at the lesion. And it's in its most stable position there. We can confirm the position by injecting into the guide catheter. I won't do a subtracted run, but we'll just put a little puff of contrast in. Okay, again, confirms the placement. So at this stage, we have to think about how we're going to treat this lesion. We have two options, well, plain balloon angioplasty. Um, it, traditionally, that was used, but the chances of recurrence and vessel recoil are quite high, so in fact, um, most commonly we use uh, balloon-mounted uh, stents that provide a scaffold. The evidence for covered stents is limited, but in some cases they can perhaps provide a more long-term solution. But in this case, we'll just use a standard balloon-mounted stent. That's a fairly bulky piece of kit to try and get across this lesion. So. For safety's sake, we're going to do a small pre-dilatation of the lesion, up to three millimeters, to provide space for the balloon-mounted stent um, to cross. So we're going to put a three millimeter by two centimeter long stent in, um, balloon in. And this goes over the 018 wire.
the 018 wire is fairly supportive, um, but the majority of the support for tracking this equipment in and out of the patient comes from the renal double curve guide catheter that's parked in the ostium of the vessel. So, control the guide wire, found it's walked further into the kidney, so we're just going to withdraw it a little. At this stage, we need to control the position of the guide catheter. So we're going to advance this three millimeter pre-dilatation balloon in through the guide catheter across the lesion. Guide catheter lumens large enough, there's enough space to inject some contrast around the outside of this balloon before we inflate it to confirm positioning for the pre-dilatation. So now you're going to inflate the balloon. You need to consult the balloon literature to know the burst pressure, the rate of burst pressure of the equipment you're using, but we're going to do a relatively low pressure inflation here of six or seven atmospheres which visually has dilated the lesion. Relatively rapid inflation and deflation in this case, and we don't need to leave the balloon inflated for a long period of time. And then we have to bat the balloon off, controlling the guide wire. Again, at this stage, it's worth just doing a very gentle injection of contrast to uh, confirm we still have a patent vessel and there's no thrombus hanging around. And now we need to think about how we treat this lesion. And we're going to use a balloon expandable stent mounted on an 018 delivery system. We're going to use a 4mm by 18mm long stent, 4mm diameter by 18mm. We know this from the previous imaging. The cross-sectional imaging has told us the, the diameter of the reference portion of the, the more normal portion of the renal artery. In fact, it's more accurate than trying to take measurements off the diagnostic angiography that we performed. So again, it's mounted on a balloon, very similar to the balloon we've used for the pre-dilatation, a slightly larger diameter. And as before, we insert across the lesion very carefully, watching the tip of the guide wire. At this stage, a little puff of contrast, again, make sure you're not embedded, but it's worth doing another proper subtracted angiogram, just to make sure we get that final position correct. I think arguably we want to withdraw the balloon just a little. We'll try again. To me, that looks great. At this stage, one thing to be careful of is if you inflate the balloon with the guide catheter right on the back of the balloon, the shoulders of the balloon will push onto the guide catheter and you can prolapse the stent forwards and your positioning, you can lose position. So you need to bite the, withdraw the guide catheter a little bit and we'll inflate the balloon mounted stent now. Again, consult the literature for the system and dilate the uh, balloon mounted stent to its nominal size. Now, these stents can be over dilated if required. To do that, you can either over pressurize the balloon, but as long as you don't go above the rate of burst pressure, or you can take this balloon out and replace it with a larger one. Just going to advance the sheath back now and withdraw the balloon carefully. Just again, very careful at this stage. If the balloon wasn't, if the stent wasn't fully embedded, there is a chance of displacing it. Time for another angiogram. Again, just a little injection. The guide catheter's not quite in the vessel yet, so we'll just advance a little. Little injection. And then another subtracted angiogram. Do this before you remove the guide wire, just to make sure you haven't caused any damage downstream. At this stage, just back the, catheter, the guide catheter off a little bit and withdraw the guide wire. 
and we remove the equipment over the O and A guide wire. If there's any doubt at this stage, I would uh, do another flush aortic angiogram, but I think the appearances we've seen are, are perfectly adequate.